work. Will Oceanside be supporting during the month of July? Can you believe we're already halfway through this year? Blows my mind, you know that? At the start of this year, the elders decided that we would support at least 12 mission works over the course of 2024. One each month. There's one month that we're going to support three, not just one. We'll talk about that when we get there. Any money contributed over budget goes to those works. Last month we supported Dean Rowe. Glenn made mention of that in the announcements. $4,181 over budget went to that congregation. But I went back and I totaled up what we've done over budget all year long. How about that number? $29,817 over budget. Folks, look at our budget amount. It's over $4,000 a month. We've contributed almost $30,000 over our budget just for half a year. You're to be commended. I'll guarantee you. So who are we supporting this month? Glenn made an announcement too. He steals my thunder. He clicks through my announcements, all my sermons and steals my thunder. No. We're going to be supporting the Chamala Mission. This is the third year that we have supported the Chamala Mission. So I want to talk about this mission. Last, last year we supported I didn't talk about it quite as much. So let's go back and let's really review a little bit more about this particular mission. The mission is found in Tanzania, Africa. There's Tanzania, that little green spot there. Just below the equator, on the eastern shores of the continent of Africa. As part of its coastline as the Indian Ocean. The capital city of Tanzania is Dodoma. Dodoma. So it's in that region of the world that we have a mission work, and it is a huge mission work there, folks, doing a tremendous work and has been for a long time. Some basic facts about Tanzania. 59 plus million people in that one little section. You know what I call that? A bunch of folk. That's a lot of souls, is it not? There are 120 different indigenous peoples in Tanzania alone. 120 different tribes, nationalities, and they can tell one another apart. That's amazing, isn't it? The language is Swahili and also English. Those are the two prominent languages. The country is divided as far as religion into three groups. One-third Muslim, one-third Christian, and that's a broad use of that term, Christian. And one-third traditional. They practice the old religions of Africa still. The predominant source of income is agriculture. That's the main business. Two major problems in that, nature, in that nation. Number one, poverty. Number two, corruption in their government. Both of these things cause tremendous problems for the people. It keeps them poor, does it not? Extremely so. We go all the way back to 1948. A man by the name of Eldridge Eccles, a gospel preacher, wanted to go to Tanzania and preach the gospel. He filed the paperwork to go and the government said, Nope, you cannot come into this nation just to preach the gospel. That's unbelievable, isn't it? To be denied access to preach the gospel of Christ. They began to study, they began to do some research, and what they found was this. If we own land in Tanzania, we can send whoever we want there, and they can do whatever they want to there. So they raised money in the United States and purchased two farms in Tanzania. And the sole purpose of that 
was to grant access to missionaries so they could preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. At that particular time, the government and the nation was under another nation. In 1961, however, they received their independence. And when the new government set itself up, they came to the two farms and they looked at the missionaries and they told them this, if you do not provide some type of social benefit, some type of benevolence to this country, out you go. Now think about that. They'd been there 10, 11 years, and now they're about to get thrown out on their heels. That is what began what is known as Chamala Mission. 1961, founders were Andrew and Claudine Conley. Gospel preacher and his wife went over there to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Brother Conley, he was a big man, tall man. And they founded a hospital over there under the oversight of a congregation in Texas known as the Park Row Church of Christ. The hospital could support 50 inpatient and it also had an outpatient clinic. And because they now had access to services, missionaries could now stay in Tanzania. Wow. You think about the creativity that went in, into this particular work, the sacrifice of many individuals that went into that work to purchase the farms, to make a hospital, doctors and nurses being willing to give parts of their lives to go over and be a part of that hospital. Folks, it's, it's unbelievable. The Chamala Mission is now under the oversight of another congregation, the, the Del Rada Church of Christ in Montgomery, Alabama. There's a picture of their church building. A good, strong, faithful congregation. They have a man by the name of Hal Ferguson. He is the stateside coordinator for Chamala Mission, and that's his wife Mary. Hal has been here to talk about the Chamala Mission about three years ago almost. His son Nathan two years ago, went over and became the missionary on the campus there at the Chamala Mission. He has a wife and three little bitty children. What a sacrifice that is, isn't it? Give up the comforts of this place to go over to a land that is filled with poverty and corruption in order to preach the gospel of Jesus. There's at least five works that are being done through the Chamala Mission. Number one, they have a preacher training school that's there. That preacher training school is based upon the same format of preacher training schools in the United States of America. The preachers come, two years of training, all day long for those two years. Once they graduate, they are then sent out into the mission field in Africa itself. Very few of them come to the United States of America. There's still the hospital that's going on there now. The hospital now is much bigger, takes on many more patients, caters to labor and delivery, and a lot of other specialty needs of the people of the nation. There are now two schools that are located on the campus. Here's what's interesting about those schools. Those children have to leave their homes to go to these schools. And during the nine months of the year, they live on campus at those schools and are taught. They are not only taught secular information, they are also taught religious information as well. They have put a farm at the Chamala Mission. And the purpose of that farm is to help them to become as self-sustaining as they possibly can be. They've learned how difficult it is to raise funds, to maintain a work like that. Over the years, think, think about it folks, almost 65 years they've been in existence. That's a long time. And for individuals to commit money over and over and over and over, year after year after year, it's hard. And especially to grow a program as big as this one's grown. So they put in a farm and they labor and they work on that farm to produce their own food for themselves. They're also doing work in many of the churches. Those preacher training students go out and preach the gospel while they're in school. They also go out after they graduate 
They go and they do all kinds of campaigns. And there's been several hundred congregations of the Lord's people established on the continent of Africa because of the Chamala mission. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 